So we did this podcast last week. It was a new series, and I got super excited because I was hoping the comic fam would enjoy it. How was the response? The response was astronomical. It was stupendous and incredible. What a we were at, of adjectives. I know. It was, it was great. amazing. <laughs> Can you tell that I had a, had a dictionary calendar? Oh, mm-hmm. I'm learning a new word every day. I'm going to go to the podcast once. tonight, and I'm going to use this word. <laughs> <laughs> I better look at my old days. You, know, you save all the papers. And, no, but it was good. It, it, it really, really was. You know, it was quintessential. It was fantastic. You so know, many so. tags. <laughs> So many tags. No, but it was great. There are so many people that are like, oh, I didn't know that this is a first. Or, wow, it's so great that I already had this cyber force in my collection. Now I know that I have an early appearance of the darkness. If you haven't checked out this video, the link's right there. But we put out a video. Now what we're going to be doing pretty often. Right now it's actually gearing up. This is the second one. We said we're going to do this bi-weekly. Yeah. But I feel like we should be shooting to do this weekly. We're going to keep listening to the comic fam. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and let us know in the comment section below. But we're talking true firsts. And you know what? True firsts, Topher over at CBSI, comicbookinvest.com, he's the one who wrote the last article and has been writing these consistently for a while now. So we have a good amount of information. This is one that just hit, and it happens to be a lot of the early appearances of Morbius, right. who's one of my favorite characters, and I know these guys like him as well. So um, check out all of these super, super early appearances of Morbius we're going to talk about today. Yeah, and yeah. thank you, Jared Leto. Yeah, for, thanks, Jared. Uh, taking the job. I'm super excited to see this. I know a lot of people in the community are concerned, but I personally, I know this is bad to say, but I liked him as Joker. I Me liked too. him as Joker, too. I, I, I think did. we're all in agree- agreement. Oh, well, mm-hmm. I'm surprised here. I thought both of you guys were... No, I think Heath Ledger is a fucking joke, and I hate Heath Ledger as the Joker. Yeah, me too. Whoa. Seriously, two thumbs down, and I will tell you about that in a different um, video. I was being sarcastic, but no, I, I'm very interested in... I hate Heath Ledger, and I think he was a very piss-poor Joker there. Uh, I really, really, really liked Jared This video's going to get a lot of dislikes. Should... Sorry, comicbookinvest.com, CBSI, for hosting this <laughs> list. Yes. We do appreciate you over there, but we're going to jump into this Morbius, potentially Jared Leto goodness list. Hey, no, Jared Leto's fantastic. And you know what, Tom? I know you've got that great uh, fanny pack. I sure do. We're going to have to put some more Jared Leto photos up. Heck yeah. You can totally delete all of that. uh, (laughs) No, I'm going to keep it all. All of it. I'm going to keep it all of it. I dislike Heath Ledger. I do. (laughs) Let's kick this list off with ASM 102. We all know the first appearance of Morbius is issue number 101. Everyone's after it. It's super hot. But issue number 102 is the first appearance of two characters that may come up in this Morbius franchise. 102 is the first appearance of Martin Bancroft and Emil Nikos, Morbius's partner and love interest. Both are characters that are, I mean, it's pretty good odds that they're going to make an appearance in, the sh- in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we're having Jared Leto be the lead, you know that there's going to be some type of love interest involved. Sure. Of course. Can't have a movie without a love interest. Apparently. Apparently not. I hate love. And it's awesome because, you know, in this issue, Spidey still has six arms. And it's kind of cool because it's another story arc. you got the Morbius behind the scenes thing. And you have Spidey took some different serum and he's got different arms. So, I mean, again, this is kind of a cool issue that people should just pick up regardless. And then the fact that it's got Martina and Emil showing up. It's, you know, it's it's a good one to pick up. Good speculation book. Now, something on this list that we're going to include here that Topher did, and I appreciate him for doing it, is the first foreign appearance of Morbius. Now, this isn't a book that is going to be super sought after, but it is the first foreign book. Spider-Man Comics Weekly, 139 and 140, is the first foreign appearance of Morbius in the UK. Doesn't quite count as foreign, if you can still read it, though, in my book. (laughs) (laughs) It's the same language, right? It costs eight pence. It says that on the cover, so that's a a good indicator that it is foreign. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. Right? I mean, it's still a it's a key moment, and it does sell for a good amount of money as well. They're hard to find. And this is an example where, I mean, I'm just impressed because the only way you can figure out what the first foreign appearance is is by looking these up, multiple foreign copies, by the month they came out. Right. And and, and something else we have to keep in mind about these uh, these Spidey Weeklies, um, 
they're magazine size, they're oversized. So the condition is going to be really, really tough on these because you're going to find that normal sized bags and boards, golden age, silver age, they don't fit a magazine sized comic. So this is another one that's going to be really, really tough to find in high grade. Then we have Marvel team up number three, Ross. Marvel team up number three is the first Maurice appearance outside of Spider-Man. But the interesting thing about Marvel team up is that Spider-Man's the one teaming up with people. So you have him teaming up with Human Torch. You have him teaming up with Omorbius again. Oh, weird. Right? Right. Yeah. It's outside of Spider-Man, though. It it is, in fact, outside of Spider-Man. It's technical. Technically. Yes, it is. And this is still a very, very early appearance of Morbius. If we're going to talk about Morbius, we're going to definitely have to talk about one of the coolest team-ups in Marvel in the first appearance of the Legion of Monsters. The Legion of Monsters is such a cool team. And again, what a perfect time to talk about it because it is October and Halloween month. Legion of Monsters, I, I guess Ghost Rider is kind of a throwaway, but the fact that you have Living Mummy, the fact that you have Morbius, the fact these other horror type people, Werewolf by Night is mm-hmm. in there. I mean, there's a lot of great ones. And Marvel Premiere 28 is the first appearance of this team. So it's the first appearance of Morbius in team of Legion of Monsters. Definitely one to be scouting, and that's a fan favorite too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely! I sold yeah. one last month on eBay for about fifty bucks, mm-hmm. and that's you know consistently going for a good price. It's always highly sought after. Well before any movie announcement too. Oh yeah, yeah, it's been a hot book for a while. Should have held on to it. That's great. Should have held right. on to it for a while. And then we were talking about these magazine size comic books. Now, you know, in the collector's market, I feel like magazine size stuff doesn't get the love it deserves because sometimes. These oversized books are key appearances. I think of the second appearance of Punisher. Yeah. You know, that magazine size. Like, we come across that There's sometimes. all those V for Vendetta and the 2080 books. There's a lot of, like, Alan Moore stuff that is Judge Dredd and that, that just because it's oversized UK magazine type things, they don't get thought about for early appearances. But they are. They absolutely are. Much like this next one on our list. Vampire Tales number one. That's right. That was uh, Morbius's first solo story. It's got that... Uh, Creepy cover. That lady all... She looks dead. It's if she's not like dead, she's dying. Looking it thing fe- yeah, it feels like Tales from the Crypt almost. Yeah, with like that dra- Dracula hanging over. And Morbius is in like the little corner. He's in the box art, yeah, just up there in the corner. That's right. And then there's another key in that run, isn't there? The other one, yeah, just a few issues later. The fifth one is his origin story, Morbius's origin. And I love that cover quite a bit more, honestly. It's way darker, way creepier. It's like kind of murky and foggy. Topher mentions it on in this article here that you know these magazines aren't as sought after. But if we look at what happened in the last couple of months, what comic book magazine size just blew everyone's mind? No, oh, Batman damned. Russ and I because, talked about that. Yeah, one. We're back to having a magazine size one, and even last year and the year before when Guardians of the Galaxy came out, what are the two big magazine size books that spiked? First appearance of Rocket Raccoon and first appearance of Star Lord, hmm. which were in those oversized. Yeah. Yep. The oversized magazines there. So, I mean, there's a lot of good magazine sized things that Marvel was releasing for years and years and years that do, in fact, have the actual first appearances of things. So, yeah, don't ignore these magazine sized books. And you should probably go to your local and make sure you get a bunch of magazine they're, sized bags and boards. Plus, yeah. they're bigger. It's cool. I like, if you can have it in a bigger format, like, why, why not? It's better for people that don't have good eyesight. Absolutely. Sure, exactly. <laughs> we're all about that. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Okay, moving on to Adventure into Fear. Issue number 20, this is Morbius' first solo series, his first shot at his own title. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, it only goes to 31, but this is a key moment in the character's existence. Well, and in the mid-70s, we had a lot of great resurgence of horror books. Because there was a lot of good horror books in the 1950s, and they kind of scaled it back pre-code. And in the 70s, you had a lot of these DC books that were doing, and a lot of these Marvel books that were bringing these characters in. And you have Tomb of Dracula, and you have uh, Werewolf by Night, and being able to have Adventure into Fear, where you had Man-Thing and Morbius. A lot of these horror comics that they were able to do more with, and the fact that he got 11 issues of basically his own run within a horror themed title oh fantastic this is just great especially for people who are big fans of the character morbius which in my opinion there just isn't enough morbius stories out there true there are not enough of them and this is a great great list for people who are looking for more great morbius content well done topher don't forget to hit that like button that subscribe button we do appreciate when you write comments in the comment section below we like hearing from you and 
if you want to see more of these true first videos, let us know. We're, we're still Please. in the formatting stages, but we do like doing this. Yep. We're having fun learning about more comics, and we hope that you learned a little something too. Thank you, Topher, over at CBSI, comicbookinvest.com for putting out this awesome list that we got in front of us. Ooh, coming in with so much good information every week. We do appreciate you. Thank you, and as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'm actually putting together the November mystery mail call. We are going to be capping it this month because we're growing pretty quick. We have about 50 slots left. The link is in the description if you want to join the community.